ke ao o ka lama lama o ka hula, the enlightenment of hula. The word ao is the light. Ma lama lama is also light, the glow of the light. It also means to nurture and to take care of. It also means to honor and to respect. Ke ao o ka ma lama lama o ka hula, the enlightenment of the hula and the hula tradition. Mahalo nui to the administration and the staff at Windward Community College, as well as the staff here where we are at the Paliku Theater. Welcome. Ke aloha nui a kako to ke ao o kama lama lama o ka hula. We are here to discuss hula. Hula history, mo'o olelo hula. Hula traditions, loina hula. Hula genealogies, mo'o kuauhau hula. Hula <coughs> legacies, ho'oilina hula. Hula lineages, eve hula. And familial lineages, ohana hula. We are here today to kuka kuka with hula memories and hula stories. So let me introduce our special guest this morning for this session of Keao o Kama Lama Lama o Kahula. We have Kumuhula Melia Lobenstein Carter. Aloha. Oh, aloha. <laughs> we have Kumuhula Le Aloha Lim Amina. Aloha. Aloha mai. And we have Kumuhula Le Momiho. Aloha. Aloha. So, let's talk hula. <laughs> to this morning, we'll talk about the word ike. Sight, vision, observation, to know, to understand, to recognize. As in this Olelo no Eau, Ike, a Ole Pauka Ike, I Loko o Kahalau ho o Kahi. Not all knowledge is contained within one school or one structure. Let's expound a little bit about this Olelo no Eau. I'm going to ask you to reflect a little bit about your lineage, your years of teaching in perpetuating the ike of your halal, and a little bit about how you understand the olelo no eau, a ole pau ka ike, i loko o ka halau ho o kahi. So we're going to start with le aloha lim amina. Aloha. Aloha. <coughs> Not all knowledge is in one school. Um, for me, as, um, do you want me to talk about my lineage? Okay. I actually come from Kohala, Hawaii, and um, a, a lot of my ancestors came from that area. Uh, and years later, I would find out that that is the area that I needed to concentrate on in presenting um, hula especially when we were going to marry Monarch. And let me try and go back there again. Um, I had uh, my teachers, my first teacher was my mom, uh, Mary Ann Lim, uh, and her teachers, and I need to go back on her teachers because in our community, she took from four of her different aunts. One was Sarah Pule, the other one was Margaret um, Ignacio, that was also Ohana. Her own aunt, um, who was quite famous and was on Oahu too, her name was Daisy Lincoln. And then, of course, the one that she uniki from was uh, Mrs. Rose D. Mercer, okay? And when we tracked the lineage going back, I wanted to see, because she couldn't remember this one, uh, when she took her uniki, who was the, um, the kumu that, was, that flew up from o Oahu 
and they had their uh, her uniki at Kauai High. And it, we found out later that it was Katie Nakaula. And uh, apparently Katie Nakaula was a dancer for Queen Lilio Kalani's uh, court. And she was teaching in the greater community. So that was kind of interesting to find that out. And I found, found that out posthumously after my mom had passed away. Um, I had found some of her papers and she had written in there who her kumus were. So that was quite interesting. In fact, I brought it with me today. And from there, she became my teacher. And I'll tell you how that happened. Um, she had her implements tied up on a pole in a closet. And I remember hitting it as a little girl one day and hearing this rattle. And so I was kind of curious and I asked her, I said, what's in this? And she said, don't touch it. You know, like how they tell you, don't touch it. So I would often look at that and, you know, keep on hitting it. And so one day I took it down. And when I opened it, here was her pu'ili, one pu'ili, one uli uli, and her ili ili. And of course, when she found out that I had done that, what's the first thing you get? Lickens. <laughs> and I did. Always. <clears throat> And then she told my father at dinner what had happened. And my father was the one that said, well, she's, he said, are you interested in what those things do? And I said, well, yeah, I just wanted to know because I kept hearing. And he turned to my mother and he told her, he says, you know what, teach her because she's kind of interested. And so that's how my mother became my teacher. And I remember her taking the pu'ili on our porch up in Parker Ranch where we were living. We were very isolated. And she was on the porch, and I saw her take this one, and she was doing this melee. And just watching her dance, I mean, I was just mesmerized by her, and I said, oh my gosh. And from that point on, I said, that's what I wanted to do. And so she did teach us, but she used to hit us a lot. So I remember telling my, it's very sore, <laughs> you know, she would hit us. And then what would happen is um, he said, okay, you know what? you go to my, to my cousin. And so my, one of my mother's kumu became also my kumu too. Her name was Mar uh, Auntie Margaret. And so I learned from her. And it was through this kumu. She only did awana or, you know, the modern hula. And she came one day and she chose five of us girls. And out of the five of us, um, we were taken to learn from Auntie Iola Niluahine. The um, State Foundation on the Culture and Arts, I found this out later, was having these um, kupuna go into the community to help bring the ancient hula back in. And you know, that's just about the time when uh, the whole Renaissance thing was starting to happen. And so that's how I began um, to be interested in hula. And I remember watching Auntie Iolani dance that first time when she got up. And um, Uncle Susie Sawaris was her ho'opa'a. And that first class that we went to, we didn't even know what we were getting into, you know. She got up on the floor and here's this spry little lady, you know, older lady walking around. I mean, she's not really fast. But when that pahu began, you saw a whole transformation in her body and her eyes. And it, when we watched her dance, I mean, I can still remember it. It was like her feet didn't touch the ground. And, she, and you were wondering, what is she looking at? And she just mesmerized, you know, I, I know for me. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's how I want to dance like. That's who I want to be like. And so it was as if now I didn't want to, because I was also dancing at the Mauna Kea Beach Hotel with my aunt, right? And I told my dad, I says, when I went home, I said, I want to dance like that lady. And he goes, so I said, I don't want to go back to Mauna Kea Beach Hotel. Please don't make me go back. I don't want to dance with He goes, why? I said, I don't want to be cute. I want to dance like that. He says, no, you're still, because I was, you know, it was a job for me, okay? So he says, no, you're still going to dance, but it's okay if you learn from this lady. And that began a whole slew of kumus that I was introduced to. But that was that beginning part of that hula kahiko. 
And like I said, it was the renaissance that we were coming through and it was a really, really important time. And now you would see the hula kahiko coming back in where, and even my aunt, she would say, she said, I don't know this type of hula. A lot of them were just teaching modern hula during that time and she was one of them. So, I mean, for that kind of ike, and I remember going on and Uncle George Naope, also came to Kohala, he taught. Uh, who else? Um, I remember when I went to college at UH Hilo, I learned from Auntie Edith Kanakaoli, I was introduced to her. And when I came to Oahu, I was with Daryl Lupinui, and um, it was through his help too, that these people helped to help me gain Ike as I was coming through time. I didn't know a lot of stuff when I was younger. And even as I was going through as an adult, I didn't, you know, I acquired. So when we're talking about, you know, growing the kuaho, when you acquire um, ike, and sometimes you do some things too that is maybe against ike, <laughs> you know, <laughs> and, but you get reminded about it. And then, you know, you get back on track again and, and we grow. So that's, I can share, that's my background. So, in reference to Ike, as we were just talking about, you were expressing, how would you translate Aole Pauta Ike Iloko Okahalau Okahi? What is your translation? Okay. Um, when I, th you know, when I think about it, um, I've done a lot of, uh, how do you say, intellectual studies. Um, one of the things that comes to mind is that there are eight different islands and I was a land title abstractor and I remember studying the maps and how the maps had all these ahupua'as on every one of the islands because we had to learn all of these things. And during, as I was coming through time, you know, hula was, I was doing research between hula and that and, um, and I began to realize that the halaos or uh, just getting a sense of they were very, very important, or the kumuhula and the hula, uh, uh, poehula, were very important to all of these chiefs because they were responsible for keeping the history of those areas. And so for, for me, when I look at that, no place is the same. That every place, it, it was as if they were the historians that had to keep that the, the stories of that area, like it's wars or, or babies that were being born, especially Ali'i, you know, the Kumu was responsible for a lot of this thing. So it seemed that the area is what was very, very important to what that Kumu and keeping the history of that area, that, that Ike. So to me, when I look at it, there's eight different islands. All of them were different. And you had different places. All the lays wouldn't be the same. In fact, when I did a study on Kuahu, the Kuahus all had different um, plants or, or lays that they would put on because that's what was from that area. Now, like a lot of us would think like, you know, Miley would be on the Kuahu or this. There was even places that used um, Limukala. You know, they, the, whatever they had is what they put for their lay. So to me, hula is not something that's standardized. That in the olden days, you told the stories from those areas. And, you know, thank goodness that a lot of these people that, and some of them were non-Hawaiians, tried to gather all of this information so that we today have something to look back at. And when you look at it, you know, they'll tell the stories of this island or that king. And so for me, Ike is not, you know, to me, back then it would have been what, Aina specific. And the Aina becomes something that's important. So for me, I, I don't see any generalization. And yet sometimes we see that people want to standardize everything. And how, how would you do that? Then you would take the uniqueness about our islands I, I mean, what would happen to that? So what I heard you say, which is very, very important in the hula tradition, 
And maybe we should think about this. Everybody should think about this. I'm sure the capturing of the stories and the histories came at different levels within, and let's use the ahupua'a. So you get the people of the aina, the maka'ainana, and then you get the ali'i, and then you get the kahuna, and the kahuna would be the expert. So you get the hakumele, you get the kumuhula, right? And so everybody at their level is recording their own histories. So that's a lot of stories being told yeah. that I think were necessary. Now, if you look at the ahupua'a, the ali'i, ai ahupua'a was the one that sponsored the halau mm -hmm. and the kumuhula. Yes. So they have to tell his stories. Yes. They have to perpetuate his, his histories, yes. right? And so for me, when I hear the term, and people say, learn from as many people as you can, I was shocked because I was taught, perpetuate the ike of your school and be respectful of other yes. schools. Yes. Miss Melia, yes. your reflection. <laughs> you want it just on EK or on the whole? No. Okay. Um, I am proud to say that I have one kumu. I come from one tree, and ours is a familial line. My grandmother, Me Ula Lia Long Lobenstein, is my kumu. Um, at times, I probably wish I. I used to look at other kumu and be like, how come she's not my kumu? She seems so much nicer. <laughs> um, you know, because it is different when you're raised by your kumu. And I, it wasn't until I was much older that I appreciated it. I didn't see it as punishment. I saw the blessing in it. Um, my grandmother was taught by her mother, Aida Pakulani Kai Anui Kai Ahue, who learned from her grand uncle, Kamava'e, who was the grandmaster for Maui. And so, you know, Tutu Lady went through her uniki process when she was young, probably 13 or 14, came back, married, had a whole parcel of children. So my grandmother and all of her siblings were raised in hula, and three of them went on to become kumu hula, although grandma was the only one who officially opened up a halau. Um, but what I... I learned, I think the biggest lesson I learned is that when your kumu tells you this is what you're going to do, that is what you're going to do. And that is the tradition that's given from generation to generation, that ha that was given, that blessing that was given, or like I like to joke around is that I was voluntold that I was going to become this for our family and for our hello. Um, my grandmother, when she came to Honolulu, she attended St. Andrew's Priory and she was introduced to the Bray Ohana. So she was trained by Mama and Daddy Bray. She did go through an uniki with them, which she said caused a little bit of a pilikia with Tutu Lady because... A little bit or a lot? A lot of bit. But luckily, they were on separate islands because she was in, she was on Oahu and Mama was on, you know, and it wasn't the 30-minute air flight back and forth. But she knew that she had disappointed her Mama because Tutu had said that with her uniki and, and her putting aside that life, um, the kuahu, all of that being a huge part of it, as she learned it, she didn't want grandma to have that burden. She wanted her to have something different. And so that was something that grandma used to always tell me is that I don't know if I want you to have this burden. And it's not until my older life of being a kumu and carrying this on now um, by myself for almost 25 years that I understand when she said, being a kumu hula is a lonely place. Yeah. It's not for everybody. You know, you, you, the, the kaumaha that comes with it, the kuleana that comes with it is really big. Um, and so that was something that for me, even though I knew I was born for this and that it was told that this was what I was going to do, I had to be ready to accept it. Um, and all of the EK that came with it to finally open up that last portal and say, okay, I, I accept this. Um, 
And so with, with grandma going through with the braids later in life, she was introduced to Uncle Henry Pa, who she considered a, a very big, important mentor in her life in how she processed EK, how she looked at things. Um, because he did have a very creative and very um, different outlook on things and how he processed them. And so that was a big influence for her. So she became this beautiful blend of her mama, of the Brays, of Auntie Lena Guerrero, um, when they used to work together, and then late, later Uncle Henry. And, and all, when you talk about Ike, and, and you wonder how, when they have so many different kumu, who do they, who do they follow? What line? But for us, our familial line is always there, the basis. And I agree with Lealoha in that every ahupua'a and moku was different. So when we talk about ka ike, it's because what they were doing on Maui was so different than what they were doing in Honolulu. What we were doing in Paukukalo was so different what was happening in Ko. And so um, how are Kumu honored each of the Kumu that they learn from and how they balance that? To me, I'm still trying to, to learn that mystery. I'm still trying to walk that straight path to honor all of her kumu and her kumus, all their kumu, which then trickle down to me. And so for me, when I say I can, my only kumu was really my grandmother. When I went to the University of Hawaii, I was blessed to meet Ed Kalahiki, and I always honor him because he helped me to find my leo, to find my chanting voice, to not be afraid of my chanting voice um, and to push myself to learn more about the oli um, and to embrace it. But my kumuhula is my grandma. Yeah. And um, I, I always joke, you know, when she talks about finding the pu'ili, if you ask me what's my least favorite hula implement, <laughs> it's the pu'ili. Because yeah. the pu'ili and my, the back of my leg were really, oh. they had pilina like but, you wouldn't believe. But you do know <laughs> there is a real strong, close connection to the word pa'i. <laughs> And, I know. And the word ho'opai-pai. <laughs> We're going to pa'i you as we encourage yes. you. Like I was saying, you know, I'm going to beat it into you. Come hell or high water, you're going to right. learn this, right? So, you know, where people see it as pa'i, yeah. they saw it as ho'opai-pai. It was love pai. taps, love ho taps, pai, love yes. taps, love taps. Yeah. There was a very, it, you know, the, I used to think that was my kumuhula, was the pu'ili, because it made you do things you didn't know you could do. But, <laughs> but she's like, look, she's like, you know, we used to always complain about Keiki that we come and they have no rhythm. She goes, because they didn't have the pu'ili, that's why. Because she's like, that's to help you. I, I was like, oh, you were beating me in rhythm. That's what it was. But, you know, the the EK, I think um, it's, it's that whole gamut. It's the scene what's in front of you and seeing what's not. It's being able to understand what is said and what is not said. I think that's the hardest part. That was the hardest lesson to learn. Um, and so when, when people ask me, how did you know how to be a kumuhula? It's like, I, I didn't, but when I closed everything off and just listened and tried to reconnect, it was in the things that I could see, but did not always see. It was in the things that I didn't hear spoken. That's what helped me to find my place as a kumuhula, to be able to tap into all of the ones who came before me. And it's like, okay, what is it that I'm supposed to understand? What is it that I'm supposed to give to my haumana now? What is it that I learned from you that is the most important to pass on. How do I honor you through this? And that for me is the Ike. So when we talk about, you know, Aohepauka Ike, it isn't for me about learning from plenty different kumuhula. It's the honor and the respect of the traditions that were given to you and how you then pass it on. There you go. So, you know, <coughs> our 
Grandma used a term called the uhini hula. The uhini is the grasshopper. And the uhini jumps from, jumps from blade to blade of grass and munch a little bit there, jump to another grass and munch a little bit there. I think uh, today they use the term hula hopping. Hula hopping my mana munch. Yes. So, but, <laughs> but, so the original term was uh, uhini hula because these are the people that are not satisfied with this grass. They got to jump one more, jump one more. But you said something very, very important and that is kupa'a. So kupa'a is the loyalty that one has to a teacher. Your situation is quite unique when you said you only had one kumuhula, and that was, of course, your, your grandma, Auntie May. And so can you imagine, I'm sure she went through it and she learned a great lesson, but I'm sure if you went to another halau to learn, well, Grandma was your first and foremost kumuhula. How would that be? You know, there are times when I know that we had other kumuhula come in, like Uncle Ray Fonseca had come in at one point um, when we were growing up. And, you know, of course, she worked with Auntie Alicia Smith. And so there were a lot of that. that I, I think there's a difference now in being the uhini and having your kumu send yeah. you to somebody else. That was different, because if grandma didn't say, okay, because there was a point where I danced with Auntie Limomi, but grandma had to say, okay, mm -hmm. you know? And it was a very brief, you know, that was my college years. That was when grandma, my grandfather had passed away and grandma had thought she was gonna retire. Um, and I missed being in hula. I missed being in halo. Um, but then I realized that I, I had so much more to learn from just my grandma. Like even now, I don't feel like I learned everything yeah. I could have. I feel like that was her way of still teaching me. It was like, now it's for you to go mm. and find out and research and, and find your place. Um, so I think that Manao gets sometimes twisted or mm. manipulated mm. to benefit the individual that, uh, the Olelo no Eo says, you know, learn from as many as you can. But the old way was your kumu filled your, your, your bowl. Your, your kumu fed you. Your kumu gave you what you needed. And it was your kumu who would then see, okay, you're lacking in this. I'm going to send mm -hmm. you here. Not you tell your kumu, <laughs> I'm going to go learn this from so-and-so. Yeah. I'm going to go take this workshop. I'm going to go do this. I'm going to go do that. You know, or I'm going to go leave and go hop from, you know, blade to blade. Um, and I think that is where we've disconnected from what it really means. I mm. really still feel that it means we honor and respect all the traditions yes. in all the moku, in whatever line it is. We understand and you look to your source to validate is that the source you should be tapping into. So, you know, <clears throat> going back to the Ike, we talked a little bit about the Kupa'a. So, you know, as hula students, yeah, back then, yeah, uh, Auntie Fos would come to us, we're at a hula performance, right? And everybody's waiting their turn, right? And then you'd be watching and then you would snicker or you would laugh. Mm. And Auntie would come right behind your neck and say, I know you oika ike halau. I ike halau ho Mm -hmm. You have the knowledge of what they're doing. All knowledge that is in one school. Mm -hmm. What did that mean? It means that it's not for anyone to criticize what anyone is doing. Like the story of the ahupua and the many levels of teaching. Yeah? And then you sit over there and you go criticize even with your laughter. Um, even with your, 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 you know the, how people give the eye, the look nowadays. As not your kuleana. It's not your kuleana. Be respectful. And when you talked about the disconnection to the ike, yeah, those, that's traditional ike. And then we have traditional kuleana. And we talked a little bit about the traditional kupa'a or the loyalty. Because you like be one uhini hula and jump all over the place. At the end, you're still going to be one uhini hula. Yes. Aole pau ka ike. 
Not all knowledge ends in one school. Reflect for us on your oh. teaching. <laughs> you know, Ms. after listening Hall. to these two, <laughs> my mind is going crazy. Yeah, but um, first of all, we need to respect everyone because we're taught, like we have a genealogy, so does hula. Each kumu comes from a different genealogy line and what they share with us, we need to respect that because that's their genealogy. And then to us as kumu, you know, everybody say, wow, they kumu, they know. How if we don't know everything. We learn every day. We're still learning. We learn from our students. They think they're learning from us. No, we're learning from them too, you know? And so we need to respect the fact that a hula is hula, yes, but every line, genealogy line, has its own style. And like for me, I've had several kumu from when I was young, that is. Um, I started off on Kauai with Helen Waya'u, and then my parents moved us to Oahu when I was eight years old. And my neighbor was dancing for Sam Naiole. And I told my mom, oh, I want to go to Hula. Can I go with her? So she took me. And I was with Uncle Kamala for a few years. Then my dad, well, my stepdad, was a classmate of John P. Lani Watkins. And so he found out that I was dancing. So he asked my dad, you know, can you bring that baby to me? You know, I'd love to have her. And so... Um, from there, I, of course, you know, back then you're taught, ask permission, don't just go. And so my parents spoke with Kamuela, Uncle Kamuela, that this was going to happen. And he was okay with it, you know, that I would move on to Uncle Johnny. And so I did, and I was with him for a few years. And then that's when um, Uncle Joseph Kahaulilio came into the picture because he saw me dancing. So it was from there I went to, um, to Uncle Joe, and that's where Mama picked me up because she was Uncle Joe, Mama. Um, I speak of Mama Vicky, E.E. E. Rodriguez, Eddie Pauline, Eddie Shorty. They were playing together music. And so that how, that's how I met Mama Vicky. And so because I was still very young, what, 12, 13 years old, and I was attending Sacred Hearts, and Mama, at that time, was, she was doing everything for the nuns, cooking, teaching piano, teaching whatever, sewing. And so she had asked my parents if she could take care of me so that I could, you know, she could tend to me as far as hula. And so that's how I went home to Mama at 13 years old. And it was from then that she hanaied me. She became my hanai Mama. And so I credit her today as the, my kumu and who has made me what I am today and given me what she has given me all these years. And I'm the only one that perpetuates her legacy today and her traditions with our halal. And um, it was sad when mama passed. She, um, she spoke to me one day, I sat me down, okay, we're going to open our halal. And I was still so young, I was like, uh, 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 I'm not ready for this, you know. Not knowing that she would not be with us too much longer. So it was three years after we opened that mama passed on. And I was devastated because I didn't know what to do. I was like, Victoria, you know, what do I do? Where do I go? What, you know, and it was Auntie Kekauilani Kalama, who is Mama's cousin, sought me out. She said, I need to speak with you. And she sat me down and she said, you're going to carry her traditions. You're going to carry her legacy. So we need to finish you with this. And so it was Auntie Kekauilani who took me through Uniki. She was the one that took me through that process, though my traditions were Mama, you know. And so when you look at that, it's all these different people that has filled my life, that has filled my bowl of hula, 
to help me become who I am today. Though I credit mama, it's because, yes, yeah, she's my kumu, she's my mama, she's my best friend, she's my everything. But you cannot forget these others who have put themselves into it too. Yeah. You know, all the ike is in there too. Right. You know, it comes from this whole bowl, not just one. Though I always say I belong to mama. True, yes. But thank you to these others. So, yes. you know, um, since you mentioned that, <laughs> remember we were both in class with <laughs> Auntie uh, Lani Kalama. Back then. <laughs> you were before me. Your class was before mine. And in this way, we can apono, confirm one, another, one another's relationship, yes. right? Because I would go to Auntie Lani's house in uh, Lani Kai. Yes. And then you would be in class. And I would be coming I out. I would be sitting outside on the porch stairs. And then you were done. And she introduced me to you. Wow. I think that's the first time we met, right? Wow. Was with Auntie Lani Kalama, right? And so she introduced you to me. We said hello. You left. And then from in the living room where you were, she took me out to the beach to do my class. Ah. And so my session was on the sand um, as she was training me for all the hula pahu songs, which brings about this word, apono. How we affirm, confirm, recognize one another as kumuhula or even students of kumuhula. Because without that pilina, without that connection, how are we going to know? Mm. So back then, the apono of the Kumuhula community and the apono of their students, one to the other, was quite important. How do you feel about that? That's awesome. And to think that our beginnings yeah. were back then, and that's, we're saying 30 plus years yes. back yes. then, brother. Yes. You know, and I was young, of course, I was too young. 30 years ago, yeah, I was young. <laughs> You know, and I, at, two, at that time, I didn't really know the structure yeah. of a halal or, or how do I do this? Yeah. I don't know. Mama's not here, yeah. but she gave me this job. Hello. So, you know, thank you to Auntie Nana. Yeah. She called me. She said, what was early to like five o'clock in the morning? She said, baby, you come pick me up. We need to talk. And I'm like, Auntie, I'm still sleepy. Yeah. But, you know, when they call you, you don't question. No matter what, you hop, skip, and jump, and you get a going. So I was like, okay, Auntie, give me time. I'm over the party. I'll be right there. And that's how it started. She said, I need to finish what my cousin did not complete. But see, for us, we're okay, yeah? They gave us that ha. Like she said, you're going to be our kumu. You're going to be the kumu. You know, we're okay with that. We got the ha from them, which I feel is so important than all these Pardon me for saying these other that want to be cool, that got to go through all of this. We don't have to show anything, brother. You know, we're, um, they gave us the ha already. Yeah. That's their blessing to us, and we take it from there because they left everything with us. Exactly. Otherwise, we wouldn't have been. And she used to always tell me, I used to say, oh, I don't want to dance. She says, you know, it's not your choice. You don't look for hula. Hula seeks you, you out. She said, and in your case, sorry, Hula found you. Yeah. So, you know, because I always used to be, oh, and I talk about her pu'ili. <laughs> We've been dancing and all of a sudden, pat, I'm like, oh, what is that for? Y'all ask me, and I ask me again. You know, so brother, you know, we were taught, you don't question. You just get up and do this. Like today, when I look at the students today, you say, okay, we have this show tomorrow. Oh, I got to go play baseball. Oh, I got to go here. I got to go party. And no such thing for us. It's like you hop, skip, and jump. You have that green hula panty ready. And your power bag. And you're going. Even if it's leaving in two minutes. But see, that's us old school. Today, they don't know that. But, you know, we treasure those times. Absolutely. You know, for us, it's so special. Yeah. But, so, you know, because okay. of that story, I can upon you, <laughs> you can upon me, right? So we know we were there, yes. right? So in your situation, Miss Le Aloha, yes. who, who going upon you? <laughs> who going to confirm who you are 
what are those relationships or what are those connections within your hula circle yeah, that we are going to upon and say, oh yeah, we was there with Kubule Aloha, we was in the same class, we was doing this. That's a part of our hula life and legacy because we're a different breed of people. Yes. Yes, hula people have a different ano. We have a different character, a different way, and a different way of doing things. That is our Hawaii, okay. our Haloa, not the Haole, you see. We have our own traditions. So talk a little bit about Apono. You know, it's what, just listening to everybody talking, and yes, you're talking about Apono, um, the story of something that happened between you and I. Um, Going back, let me just say that my mother did, I, I think I mentioned my mother went through Uniki, right? So I always looked at my mom for, you know, for, for her to tell me yes or to tell me no as I was coming through time. And I remember when I was going to start teaching, uh, Nanakuli High School had asked me if, because uh, my sister-in-law knew I taught Kahiko. So I went back to my mother and I asked her, I said, do, I, do you think I should teach? Because... Um, and she says, well, yeah, you can teach. I said, but it's hula kahiko. She says, don't you remember? I don't remember. I didn't remember. She says, you uniki from Auntie Iolani. And Tutu Margaret, also uniki from Auntie Iolani too. And the people that knew this were, you know, when you're young, you're not paying attention to these things. The people that knew was Uncle George Naope. And Uncle and it was really funny because I remember in 1997, um, uh, you know, there was, a, there was something that happened, but in 1999, Auntie Dottie had come and asked if I would judge, okay? Mm -hmm. And I didn't realize why she was asking me to come and judge the Merry Monarch. And she called me on the phone and, you know, I was like this, oh, Auntie, you know, I'm thinking cost, all that kind of stuff. Because my sister, you know, was, was working with me during that time, <coughs> Nani. And so I says, you know, my sister Nani is right there. Why don't you go ahead and call her? And she swore at me. And she said, if I wanted your sister, I would have I asked for her. I'm asking for you. And I didn't understand until she said, you come to the meeting. And so I said, okay, Auntie, okay, don't, don't say anything. I'm, I'm coming. I will come. So, of course, I go to the meeting. All right? So I'm walking in. And so she tells me to sit at the end of the table. And I remember everybody watching me walking in. And I heard, heard comments like this. Oh, is she going to enter again? No sense we enter. You know, those kinds of comments were happening. And there's a whole reason why. But that particular um, Mary Monarch, and it was my first year to judge, I sat there and I just, you know, I was, of course, I was really, you know, kind of shy because you, the whole panel. And Auntie Dottie goes ahead and announces, she says, as you know, Huakale Kamau just recently passed. And so we have, um, judging this year, me, I felt this whole weight go <laughs> right on my shoulder. And I went, oh my gosh, oh my, oh my gosh, it's my lineage from Auntie Iolani because she was the chanter for mm. Auntie Io. Mm. And this whole thing went over my body and I was, I was like, I froze. And I said, oh my gosh, the kuleana. I could feel, I says, you're walking this, you need to walk this walk. And it's not until five years later, I, I, you know, I was judging for Mary Monarch. And then we, you know, my mom said, you have the next generation, so they, you, maybe you should go ahead and think about entering Mary Monarch again and bring, what, which was my daughter, my nieces, you mm -hmm. know. And I said, okay, mom. You know, I wasn't going to go against my mom because she was very, very strong about it. And I said, okay. And I was asked by Dottie Thompson to name three judges, three people that I would want to take my place. And there was, and I gave these three names. You know, till this very day, I can't remember who the third one was, but I gave Uncle George uh, one kumu. I won't mention the name, but I gave your name. And I get this call that comes to me and says, I want to know why you asked for him. 
And I says, well, Auntie, it's because, you know, every year he's a composer. And I said, what I do know about Kawai Kapo is that he started speaking Olelo from when he was a young child, from baby, I believe. And I says, and you know, that kind of Ike, you don't have, you know, not even I spoke Hawaiian. My, my grandparents spoke Hawaiian, but I never spoke Hawaiian. And I says, and he composes. And I said, and his Ike that he can bring to Mary Monarch can help, you know, with um, continuing the hula. And that's what I shared with her. And she says, is that what you're, I said, yes. I said, and that's the reason why I shared his name. Because I, I says, when I look at the panel, I think that he can contribute to what you're trying to do to perpetuate hula. And it wasn't until years later that I found out and see this apono is the kind that exists up here, but nobody can see. And when I found out that you were a Tiolani student, and I finally realized, I said, oh my God, our ancestors know what they want to see. So that kind of apono is something that's on a different spiritual level. And so when I share that with you, a lot of the stuff that has happened to me has been on that kind of level and maybe not the kind that people can really see. You're talking about Auntie Nana Kalama. I was told to go to her by my teacher, Pilahi Paki. I went to Pilahi because I knew that I didn't know how to teach, that to, you can, I, I used to, cons I, so, sorry for being so, I thought of myself as a great dancer. I, I thought of myself, I always wanted to be a great dancer, but maybe I'm not gonna be a good teacher. Who can teach me what I need mm -hmm. to do and need to know so that I can be a good teacher? And it led me to Pilahi Paki, only to find out that Pilahi Paki and Auntie Iolani Luahini are first cousins. And that's the only way she accepted me as a student because she said, I do not let anybody pick my brain. And through Pilahi, she sent me to Auntie Nana. And I, I went to Auntie Nana because I had to learn certain things from Auntie Nana so that because Pilahi would do these lectures and then we would do this little presentation before she gave her lectures. And it included Auntie Nana, myself, and Uncle Mo Keale. It was through Uncle Mo that I met Pilahi. So all of these kinds of things that have happened to me has not been where it's obvious to the eyes, is if I can explain that. So, Ella? It's, you know, it's, it's, you know, reflect again on the word up. Hono. And then putting everything into proper place and proper perspective, uh, the pono, the order, and how we confirm, recognize um, one another in the tradition of hula. So you're speaking about this level of a pono that is very, very spiritual. Yeah. But you did mention the name of Uncle George in the open. And Uncle George, regardless of what people would say about Uncle George, I knew this one thing about him, and that is he had a fabulous memory. Mm. He knew all the hula people. He knew not only them, but who their teachers were, and who their teachers were, yes. and who their teachers were. Yes. So this is where the apono comes in again, because Uncle George would be the one that would say, oh no, this is a student of so-and-so. Yes. That's very traditional. And that's the way it should always be done amongst hula people. The elders of the hula, the kupuna of the hula, who have gone through the kupu process of being the haumana, of being the alaka'i, then becoming maybe the pu'opua'a, then becoming the kumukula, or the kako'o. Whatever it is, there is a process you have to go through to know and understand the mentality of the kupuna in the ao, the light, the malamalama, the nurturing, the honor and the respect 
of the Kula traditions. How was your apono? Yeah. Right here. <laughs> This is like the most physical right here. Because I know your grandma. <laughs> right. And because I, I was blessed to be that little opihi that was with her <laughs> everywhere. So when we talk about the pilina and the apono, it's I grew up with Uncle Bill Lincoln. I have all the pictures yes, with yes. him, with your ohana. I have pictures with Auntie Mo. Grandma, I have pictures of Auntie Mo with Grandma <laughs> when, you know, back in the 60s, before I was even a little twinkle in the eye. <laughs> So I grew up around all of these kumu that people now, or the generation, I'll say the generation below me, talk about as the great. It's like I grew up, up with, them. with yeah. them, you know? And so that was the first apono. And then their students, now I get to, you folks helped raise me too. You folks saw me growing up too. And I saw all of you growing up too. You know, and grandma coming to help you at Hello and being a mentor. I never forget that letter that she wrote. And, you know, it was for you getting some award, getting recognized from the, the legislature and how she oh. had, like, even in her kupuna status, how she admired all of your work and had said this he's a visionary he honors the present and the past and that was what 30 something years ago um all of those things are the apono uh, when we see each other we know whose students are with who and grandma one of the lessons she had taught me was you know melia you don't need to tell everybody because i used to say well she never walked into a room and said aloha i'm kumuhula me lobenstein i'm here she never said that she just kind of floated yeah. into the room and everybody just kind of had a stilled hush and you knew she had arrived and there was that, that respect. And so when Lealoha talks about the, the, that spiritual level, I, I think that is so important because all of our kupuna were already connected to each other. Mm. Um, and so they have continued that pilina from generation to generation, and we're just the physical manifestation of that. We are the physical manifestations of our kumuhula? Of our kumuhula, and their apono oh, no. of each other, and they're living that aohe pau kaike, all of that. So we are that living ha of what they already gave us. Talk about you being the living representation of your kumuhula. I am. I, I mean, I am Kahanu Ola. She, they, my tutu named me for a purpose. And that ha, I remember grandma used to say, without the ha, we have nothing, right? We are ha ole. And she's like, you know, Melia, you don't have to no, tell we're everybody. Ha -loa. Yeah, no, we're, ha, no we're, we're not ha ole, we're, we're ha, -loa. ha loa. We're ha loa, but you know, her whole thing of, you don't have to tell everybody because the people who know, yes. they know already, they know. you know? and. We didn't have Facebook and social mm. media and newspapers. We didn't have to say, oh, I'm the student of so-and-so because the people who knew or needed to know already knew mm. because they had this pilina already. We didn't have to go and broadcast, oh, um, I studied with Yolani Luahine mm. or I studied with Edith Kanaka Ole because those who, it's like, if you know, you know. No, yes. You know, you know, no. because it's they, in the style. It's in the, the style. style. It's in the kulana. It's in your ano. It's in everything that you do because you are the ha. You're the la la of your kumu. Okay. And it speaks for itself. You don't have to broadcast. So when speaking about style, okay, when speaking about style, integrity, Hie hie, being distinguished, being regal. Those are things that I thought were always associated with kumuhula. I know they are associated with the kumuhula I learned from. Today, when I look out there, I always wonder, where is the hie hie of the kumuhula? Their role and responsibility to be the role model in every which way, in manner, in the voice, in the discipline, in the dress. Because we just said, 
we are the physical manifestations of our kumuhula. Are you we are. the physical manifestation yes. of your kumuhula? And do you reflect all of that? We reflect them, who they were, you know, and what they left us. We are a reflection of them. So we, it's important that we remember that, you know. But today is sad because the kumu today, okay, I saw her, her group. Oh, tomorrow I'm going to look like that. You know, or, oh, I saw you, oh, I'm going to look like that. Then you see them perform and you're like, hmm. You know, because I guess, thank you, they admire what we do. They admire who we are and what we present, that they want to look like that. But that's not what it is. You got to be you. You know, be a representation of your kumu. Okay, and sorry not to get off the subject, but my insight is because I sit and listen to Leah and to you, um, our connection to Auntie Io, um, because I was Mama's opihi, I have that connection to Auntie Io too. Mama would take me to her, you know, and then we did uh, Nakupuna night at the Moana when I got my license. I was the one that had to go pick up Auntie, bring her to work, take her home. And because I became the driver. And so I listened to this connection that we have. And it's like, oh my gosh, from a young time, I was, we were already upon or connected. It was, it was there. And I, so I had to change the subject. But because my insight is like, I didn't even realize all of this that from a young age, we were already connected, not knowing it. And Emilia was because from church. I used to see all that playing the organ <laughs> and being um, close to Auntie May because I would travel with them with Uncle Bill. And I think May has those pictures I do. of <laughs> us traveling on the ships. So, you know, my connection to May has been since she's been born. Yeah. But with you guys not knowing that we were already connected from when I was that young. So I'm, I'm sorry, brother. I'm, I'm in awe because to have gone through this, my life has been so rich with because of all of you. I think the and pilina, these people that you know have connected us. I think the pilina that so connects awesome. all of us it started way back when. Mm -hmm. It's so awesome. Maybe brother. ten generations oh, ago. Man. Yeah. And we're yeah. only here yeah. because it was destined that we all and, do exactly what we do. But it looking brought us together like yeah. this, but it's, yeah. it, it, I'm sorry, I'm just, yeah. I'm in awe, I'm and in awe. That's the halo. Not yeah. knowing this, this, you know, our lives were already, it was molded already. That's the halo, the <sighs> breath, yeah? the breath that yeah. connects the us all. That, the ha that came from our kupuna. The heart that's the heart that's a part of our tradition and everything we do. Yeah. Le Aloha. Yes. Are you a representative of your kumuhula? Do you reflect the hie hie, <laughs> the mode of dress, just yes. the mannerisms? Yes. Are you a representative of your kumuhula? I'm going to say yes. You know, um, they had etiquette, they understood that, they had um, pride, yet it was very ha'a, you know. Um, even when we, you know, went in teaching our, our ladies, I mean, to have, you know, some of them would come to us, you know, a lot of people that dance are very shy, and they come to us like this, and we have to teach them how to, you know, to have pride in themselves, so, yes. Um, in how many ways? Oh, gosh. Dress is important. Your mm -hmm. ano is important. But I think the ike that you get into the haumana is what becomes very important. And I just want to share just a little bit about this. Because um, when I tell you that I went to Pilahi Paki, she had nothing to do with hula, per se. And when she, you know, the first question, I'll tell you, when I went to her, the first question she asked me, she says, do you speak Hawaiian? I said, no. She said, then what the hell makes you think you can teach hula? 
And I sat there kind of dumbfounded because she was very stern. And I said, you know what? You're right. Because I was trying to tell her, oh, my, my grandparents. So she said, I didn't ask about your grandparents. I asked about you. And I said, no, I don't speak it. So she says, so what the hell makes you think you can teach Hula? So I said, I said, I realized, I said, no, okay, okay, she's right. So I said, well, thank you very much. And I got to stand up. I went to stand up. I said, thank you very much for your time. She said, I didn't tell you to leave. Sit back down. And I was stunned because this lady, I mean, was just, she was just mm -hmm. very point blank with me. She said, I didn't dismiss you. And so she started to ask about my teachers. Who are your teachers? I told her about my mother. She said, I don't know her. I told her about my aunts. I don't know them. And then when I said Auntie Iolani's name, she says, bingo. You did not come to my door by chance. You, were, you came to my door by design. Now, because of, and she, said, and she told me the connection. She said, we're first cousins. I will take you on as my student. I was very stunned. And I wasn't sure what this lady could help me with. She said, I have nothing to do with hula. Just let me tell you right off the bat. And I'm going, so what the hell am I going to learn? You know what I'm saying? And so she says, she had given me this paper. And she threw it across the table. And she said, next week when you come back, chant that. I wasn't even a chanter. I mean, I didn't chant, you know? And she says, come back and chant this. This is your... Your, you pass, then you can be my student. And I'm going, whoa. And I remember having to study that, that, that melee that she had on that paper. And I had to give it a voice. I had to look into the words and, and try to understand. I had, lucky thing, I had a Hawaiian dictionary that I had to look into these words and, and delve in and say, how would I express this? What is this, this words trying to tell me? That was my first lesson into learning about a composition. And so when I did come back, I, I tell you, I was scared. I, I was even doubtful if I wanted to even go back. I almost turned the car around that one week later, but I did. And I did chant that for her the best I knew how. And I put, I remember putting my whole emotions behind the words and um, I closed my eyes because I was too, too afraid to see her face. And when I did open my eyes, after I was done, her head was bowed and tears, there was a pool of tears on the table. And you know, the Hawaiians called the hupe when the thing came out. And I stood there like stunned and I didn't know what to say. And then finally her eyes lifted and that was, you know, when she finally locked into my eyes, she said, from this day forth, your name is Lealoha. Mm. And that's where I got the name Lealoha, because see, my father never gave his daughters any Hawaiian names. It wasn't fashionable to have a Hawaiian name in our community. I'm sorry, that's the way it yeah. was. And I remember her telling me that, and she said, in this chant, you will chant to op, to vehe and to pani in everything that you do. And um, I remember being stunned and saying, okay. And I, and I also remember having to tell her that I don't know if my father's gonna agree to this. In fact, we had to fly my father down to sit with her so that she could explain the kuleana mm -hmm. that I was going to take on with her. And she told me right off the bat, she says, I do not want you to chant I do not want you to sing. I thought I was really a bad chanter and a bad singer, and I was going, okay. She said, I want you to be the choreographer. She used that mm. word. She says, everything that you do, she says, you will, from this day forth, she said, you will not under, she said, there'll be mele that you need, the composers are the most important thing you need to look at. She says, and some of these mele that you're going to come across, you don't, you will never know who the composers are. And that's where you're going to have to really look into the mele, and you're going to have to really do a lot of research. And some of the ike, you will never, ever understand because the times have passed. And she talked about, she says, you know, like there will be a saying, like maybe something happened funny at a, at a party, and then we come up with a saying. And you know, we say that Hawaiian saying, and 
and all the people that are come, you know, come, uh, come on, that know it, they'll understand, but other people won't understand. So she said, some of that ike will be lost. However, if you delve enough into it, you may be able to get close to what the composer means. And so she stressed this with me about Meli. And if the composers are alive, you talk to the composers. First of all, you be respectful, you get permission. You do not just do mm -hmm. something without getting permission. And it was through that that I began to see the composers are the key. So I have a say, there is no hula if there is no mele, mm -hmm. and there is no mele if there is no inspired composer. And that's what I got from this ike, and that's how I got to know Auntie Nana. And, and you, you folks are talking about, you know, these people, and I'm going, oh my gosh. I, I feel that, you know, <clears throat> in my lifetime with hula, that I've been blessed truly. Mm -hmm. I, 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 the apono, which we were just talking about and all that we just shared is really, really important because we are not here at this time, at this place, just for this time at this place. We are connected to the past through the teachings that were channeled down that we received from our teachers. And because you are all the physical representations of those teachers, and you took the kuleana, the responsibility, you took the kupa'a, the loyalty, and that you are the kulike, just like representing those teachers, that those traditions will continue to live on. This is Ke Ao Okama Lama Lama Oka Hula, the enlightenment of the Hula and Hula traditions. At this time, we'll take a short break and we will come back for further discussion. Ke Ao, the light, Okama Lama Lama, the glow, the nurturing, the respect, the honor of our hula of Hawaii Inei. <laughs> 